All right, guys, this video is going to get into the structure of Earth. We've already talked about the basics of Earth structure, such as the crust, mantle, and core. This is going to get a little bit more detailed, talking about oceanic crust and continental crust, the mantle, the lithosphere, and the asthenosphere. This is really the baseline for our understanding of plate tectonics and continental drift, so it's important that you take really good notes here. All right, so let's go ahead and review the basics. We start with the crust, this very outside physical layer of Earth. It's not the atmosphere. That's the blanket of gases that surrounds our Earth. The crust is that rocky sphere that surrounds our Earth. Then we have our mantle, which is kind of this big middle layer here, and then the core. And the core can be broken and broken up into an outer part and an inner part. We're going to visit that again later when we get into earthquakes. For right now, we're going to concentrate mainly on the crust over here and the mantle right down here. And just so you know what we're looking at, I'm going to reference this little pie wedge of the pole bunch here. This pie wedge here shows the crust on the top and then the mantle right below it. We're going to break this picture down and understand it because if you get this little pie wedge right here, then you'll really get everything that we need to know about the uh, crust of Earth and Earth structure. All right, so let's break it down. Let's go ahead and take a look at this little pie wedge right here. And you'll notice that it's broken down into two parts. We have a continental crust and an oceanic crust. We're going to begin by discussing just the continental crust itself. The continental crust is what we live on. It's what the continents are made out of. And for the most part, it's mainly granite. There's a lot of sedimentary rocks covering all this stuff, but the dominant rock of all the continental crust is going to be granite. And it also has a lower density because it is granite. In addition, this tends to be a thicker crust. Now, it gets thicker at the mountains and a little bit thinner as you move out towards the oceans, but it goes anywhere from about 5 to 10 kilometers thick to as much as 70 kilometers thick at the mountains. So let's take a look at the oceanic crust. The oceanic crust right over here, instead of being made of granite, is dominantly made of basalt. And along with that then, it hits a much higher density than the granite. Now, the oceanic crust is also considerably thinner than the continental crust. It's anywhere from about just a couple kilometers thin to maybe about five kilometers thick. It's not a very thick layer of earth. However, still keep in mind about how big a couple kilometers is. If you were to drive from Palatine High School to Spunky Dunker Donuts, that's about 1.9 kilometers. So you're not even going two kilometers if you were to go from Palatine to Spunky Dunkers. So even though I say that three kilometers is thin, Relatively speaking, it's still pretty thick. All right, let's talk about the mantle. That's this layer here that starts just under the crust and goes all the way on down to the core. Something to keep in mind here is that the mantle is like 3,000 kilometers thick. And we're only concerned with this first 100 kilometers of the mantle. This first little tiny, tiny, tiny portion of it. I can't even draw it. It's such a small amount compared to the rest of the mantle. So we're only concerned with the very upper, upper, upper boundary of the mantle just below the crust. Now uniformly throughout the mantle, however, temperatures increase with depth. And why is that important? Because just below the oceanic and continental crust here, we have this, this layer right here. It says rigid upper mantle right here. Now why is it a rigid upper mantle? Because it's relatively cold. It's near the surface of the earth. It's only about 25 to 30 kilometers down below the oceanic crust and below the continental crust. It's not a very thick layer. And it's so close to the surface of the earth and away from the heat of the interior of the earth that it's much cooler. Because it's much cooler, it's brittle. Now, what does brittle mean? If it is a review, because we've talked about it before, brittle means that it will bend before it breaks, like a graham cracker. If you hit a graham cracker, it will shatter into a thousand pieces before it bends. Now, just below this rigid upper mantle right here, temperatures begin to warm up with depth. And we reach the lower upper mantle. Again, I keep on saying lower upper mantle and the rigid upper mantle because we're only talking about the little tiniest portion of the mantle right at the very tippy top below the crust. So now when we talk about the lower upper mantle, we've reached a point where temperatures are increasing. And so maybe we're about 50 to 100 kilometers deep here. 
where temperatures are increasing and because of that the rocks here become plastic and what that means is they're able to bend before they break they're able to bend before they break that's what the that's what plastic means all right now let's talk about the lithosphere the lithosphere is a combination of the three rigid layers of earth's outer shell we have the continental crust the oceanic crust and this very rigid upper mantle all three together the oceanic the continental and the rigid upper mantle all three together make up a combined layer called the lithosphere why because litho means rock so the lithosphere is the sphere of rock that surrounds the earth and that's what the lithosphere is it's a combination of the continental crust, the oceanic crust, and this rigid upper mantle. They're relatively cold layers that are all brittle. Next we have the asthenosphere. The word asthenosphere means plastic layer or plastic sphere. Asthenos means plastic-like. And this is just below the lithosphere, just below the continental, oceanic, and rigid upper mantle. It's this kind of red zone right here. Remember, this is all in the upper mantle here, just in the first hundred or so kilometers below the surface of the Earth. But temperatures are so high down here that the rocks are more of a plastic. And what that means is, is they'll bend before they break. But they also have the ability to flow. That's what a plastic is. It's kind of a solid that can act like a liquid or act like a fluid. And a fluid is anything that can move around like air or water. So... A plastic is a solid that can kind of flow around. We're going to model that in class. All right, in this video, we talked about some of the basics, crust, core, and mantle. We got into the oceanic crust versus the continental crust. We talked a little bit about the mantle, both the upper mantle and the lower upper mantle. We talked about the lithosphere, the combination of layers within the Earth's crust. We also talked about the asthenosphere, that plastic layer of Earth's crust just below the lithosphere.